Yo, what's up Studio Bounce? I'm Joe Vandal, currently in London at Talyard Studios. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make music in the studio and break down some songs I did. Follow me. Yeah, I'm a producer from Amsterdam. I'm 25 years old. And I started around the age of 16. And at, back then I was working in a um, garage band, just making hip hop beats for my, for my mates and they just rap over it, like old school hip hop beats. And then um, after a while, I started using Logic Pro because uh, my grandfather, he's a producer too. And whenever I was at his place, I asked if I could use uh, Logic. And then I got a, a MacBook, like the white one, the old one. And then I started producing in Logic and it was really nice, a big advantage. Right now I'm at Bank Holiday Studios and I'm just here for the day because I'm not from London. I uh, wish I could show you guys my studio in Amsterdam, but just because I'm here already, we decided to do it here. And uh, I heard the studio is pretty legendary. All right, so my studio back home in Amsterdam, which I actually wanted to show you, is a quite unusual place. It's in like the old docks of Amsterdam. And um, I rented out this container. I don't know what it was before, I think it was like a, a office, like a temporary office or a temporary classroom. It looked like a mess before I started like building it into a studio. So what we did, we raised the floor, we expanded the walls, like isolated it so it wasn't that cold because I got in there last January, like not this January but like a year ago and it was really cold and just for like the, the sound to make it sound good inside, we isolated the walls and um, put a floor in there, painted it. Then I put all my gear in there. And uh, yeah, it's been working really fine ever since. Yeah, and the gear that I work with is, I usually work from my laptop, because when I travel, it's really convenient just to work from in the box, you know, with my big ass hard drive here. <laughs> but in the studio, I have some, some gear, like I have a, a micro cork, the XL, the white one, or like off-white one. I have a Yamaha YS100, it's like a synth from the 90, 90s with very dirty sounds, very warm sounds. Try to record that a lot. Uh, I have a very cheap mic, but it's a good. It's like a replica from another mic. I don't even know the name. It's just a good mic, and I don't really care about the brand as long as it sounds nice. Yeah, well, it, I think it's an MXL mic, like a Chinese produced in China and whatever. Um, I have a piano, a real piano. I always wanted to record real piano, so I, I decided to buy a cheap one from the internet. Then I had to get it into my studio and tune it again, because when you move a piano, it kind of be tunes. And that's basically what I work with. The, my musical style, you can kind of, uh, I, it's really hard to pinpoint, because I love so much different music. I, um, I listen to R&B, house, jazz, soul, indie everything and i think my musical style is influenced by all of that but then i made my own version of it and just electronic i'd say so today i decided to break down two songs for you uh, the first one is going to be my single someone that you love featuring olivia nelson the second one is going to be an edit i made for in the club and it's the work edit from rihanna but then i covered it so looking at this track i have like 83 tracks in it that's a lot for me. Um, well, it started off as a, like a simple draft, like I said. Um, when I start producing a, a track, I really love to start with um, a vibe. So that could be drums, but mostly it's like uh, melodic instruments and just a sound that gives me a feeling. Because when you listen to a song, uh, the first 20 seconds are very essential. Otherwise, you just skip through and then it's a waste of your time, you know? So. Um, I started with this, it's like, um, like a, a filtered down um, saw wave and a friend of mine actually played this on the keys because I mean I can play keys but I'm not that good so I prefer to just like uh, invite musicians and then I record them and then from that stuff I make a whole track. And after that, I decided to choose a different sound to keep it uh, interesting. And that's these sort of xylophone marimba type of sounds. And then 
it, then it just builds up with the vocals over it. And then in the pre-chorus, uh, I, I mean, it's really important in the song for me, it was important to, to make it build up and, and build a certain tension. So that's where I added even more instruments. I added a piano and I think another synth. And then the melody changes, so it's like really building tension. So yeah, as you as you can hear, I didn't really use a lot of drums in the in, in the in the beginning, because I mean that impact from the drums and everything needs to be at the chorus, because I want everybody to sing the chorus and to remember that, so it has to be very impactful. And this is basically the chorus. Let's go to the drums for a bit. It's like just an offbeat hi-hat. I've had this uh, sample from a drum break. You can hear the noise in there too. Like... And I chopped it up. It usually sounds like this. So I just sped it up, took out the snares and only used the hi-hat to give it like a more natural feel. I really love that, that combination of electronic sounds, but it still has to sound like a band could play it, could have played it. So that's why I added this. Um, I have like a, like a hand clap. And I laid a few claps so that the, the impact is bigger than in the build-up. You know, because in the build-up I only had this like one single hand clap and then when it drops you need more impact. Just simple 4x4 four four kick. A little cowbell to make the groove. And then I added like a, another snare, like a really fat one. That's basically the groove from the chorus. And what I also did, I recorded a bass player. He just played like a lot of bass lines and he like slapped and everything. And then I just um, picked out the best parts and compiled it into the perfect bass line in combination with the bass I already had. So when you listen to the, that stuff he recorded and I chopped up, you can't really pinpoint what's happening. It sounds really stupid if you listen to it like this. But then if I if I would add if I would add the bass line. It makes more sense, even especially with this extra bass added. then add drums. So it really starts grooving. So um, yeah, after I recorded the bass player and compiled like that bass line, the, the chorus was basically finished and this is what it sounds like. how I uh, made Someone That You Love featuring Olivia Nelson and another thing I would really love to show you is um, how I made an edit is the edit of Work by Rihanna it's basically a, a cover because there's nothing from Rihanna in there so I was in France uh, I had a show that night 
and around that time work from Rihanna came out and it was already overplayed in the clubs everybody played it but it's just a really good record and because everybody knew it I wanted to make my own version of it and surprise people and yeah I think I'm gonna break it down for you so um yeah when I was making this project I was sitting in a like a, a cafe so the project is kind of a mess and I haven't looked into it in a while but uh, yeah, I started off with the with the like I said with the chords and the vocal. So these are the chords. Then I added the the vocals. Um, when I made it in that cafe, I just took the acapella from uh, from Rihanna. But then I asked Olivia Nelson, by the way, who was on my um, my single. I asked her to record it and to like try to sound <laughs> like Rihanna as much as possible and this is what it sounds like on itself. It, it kind of sounds similar, it, you, you can hear it's not Rihanna but when you play it in the club with everything over it, you don't really hear it. So. And then when I make edits, I like to um, add elements from other songs that are very uh, popular. So I got the um, the intro from uh, the Punjabi MC song. Yeah, Mundian to I, I can't I can't even pronounce it. At least I mean it's this song. It's like that. It's like that. And then I I um. Put it in Melodyne because I wanted to change the like the melody. So as you can hear, it's like And for the drop, um, it always takes me takes me some time because when I build the like I said in the first um, breaking down of the song, "Someone That You Love," uh, I just start with a vibe. So this was the vibe, the intro, and it always takes me a while before I really decide which way to go with the drop. Um, the reason I made this drop like this, like the drums are like. Because I had uh, another edit of a song which uses the drums from uh, Q-Tips, Breed and Stop. It's also like... So it was really nice to mix them together. And I think I kind of prepared my set like that. So I just made it drop like this. And I just um, like uh, pitched down the vocals. Yeah, I came up with this bass line and I decided to layer it with another synth and these vocals. And these vocals are actually the same from uh, my Be All Right cover. Yeah, this is, this is like the same chords from the... I try I, I love to use these vocal samples a lot. And then after the second drop, I just made like a little halftime part.
Right. Just to change it up, you know. I never play songs this long or to that part, but sometimes when I play the intro, I just um, start it at this drop. And then I made it like a, a little outro that's easy to mix. And I think I even made an edit where I just have the vocal. So I could mix that other song in like that. It's really easy for myself to, to uh, play it like that. Otherwise, I'd have to figure out different ways to mix it. And yeah, that's basically how I made this edit. So that's basically how I made my vandalized cover of Work. How I made my single that just came out, Someone That You Love, featuring Olivia Nelson. It's out on Spotify. It's out on SoundCloud. So go check that out. And uh, I want to thank Studio Bounce for this opportunity. I was Jero Vandal. Yeah.